congratulations that you won uh, your podium, so that would, a Norwegian sweep. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Yeah, it's good to be back in Bergen now after some uh, months of traveling. So it's nice to have like an easy, easy week now and uh, before we build up again towards the half Iron Bowl Championship in Mabaya. Can you tell me one or two really fun and memorable things that have happened in the last week since you crossed the finish line? Uh, traveling home with uh, ten uh, baggages between me and Christian. That's uh, memorable in a bad uh, tricky to get everything to the airport, but I guess uh, everything came home in the end. And, uh, yeah, just being home after spending so much time away and then uh, Looking back to what we have achieved as a team over the last uh, half year has been amazing. And it's, uh, it's a tricky balance now to kind of uh, enjoy the victory enough to like enjoy it, but also let yourself down and then kind of build up again towards Mabaya. So it's, uh, it's a lot of work to be done. And then in terms of fun, funny things after the week, so straight after or the night after the race, uh, yeah, I started feeling quite bad with like a little bit of fever and uh, was uh, out for like a few days of, with uh, sickness uh, after emptying myself on the uh, race day. So uh, after being like uh, feeling like freezing during the whole night, I thought, okay, m maybe it's time to put on like the core sensor now and, and see if I can like actually uh, record like just laying in bed uh, in the morning or like for higher skin temperatures and uh, heat stress than what I did in the race. So that's a bit funny. <laughs> yeah, it's been a very, very slow recovery. So uh, it hasn't been a lot of training over the last week. Yeah, the legs doesn't respond yet. Yeah, I'm, I'm very impressed by Juna Thunberg because he was able to be on the podium uh, yesterday. So uh, at the T100 in, um, in Spain, so pretty, pretty impressed by him because yeah, as Christian, I haven't been sick, but uh, it's, um, yeah, it's been a slow recovery, I would say. What would you say would be two of the key moments uh, for, for each of you? One being a really positive pivotal point and one being a more challenging pivotal point in, in the race. I'm able to catch up with the front group at the end of the bike after I lost contact on the flat section after the turnaround. I was a uh, decision or the legs made a decision for me to not follow their wheel because it was just too fast. And then uh, being able to use the downhill to catch back up again, that was, uh, yeah, it was good for me. And uh, I guess a more negative pivot point was uh, when I lost contact with Christian and Casper on the run, where I suffered towards the end. I think that was, uh, the negative pivot. Well, for me, I think it was when that gap opened up on the bike, like around halfway point, when uh, I had Gustav and Casper and Magnus behind, and I was following uh, Sam Dedlo uh, after the turning point on the way, sort of on the whole flat section on the top. Uh, and I thought that, okay, this is uh, sort of my ticket to win. And I, I was so behind, and uh, yeah, the gap was really, really opening up. And uh, I thought that uh, that would be a gap that would just open up to minutes uh, by, by the end of the bike. But then after the downhill, when we start riding like alongside the promenade, maybe 10k to go, then suddenly the whole group comes together again. And that was maybe like the, uh, of course it was good to see Gustav and Kasper there, but to, to see like the them with like the fact that maybe the pace in our group wasn't that high in the end was maybe a little bit like negative like uh, as well as uh, maybe on the second lap there when Gustav refused to be in the front and we had to sort of share the workload there then uh, and I felt that it was a little bit like uh, windy in the front uh, and uh, I thought okay it's a a long day ahead still. So can you give us a bit of a picture in regards to the training, say 10 months out and then two to three months out and then once you arrived in Nice and how that changed from um, a strategy, from your, your data-driven metrics, et cetera, as you made those changes and approached the race day strategically? So it's been bulking it up uh, a little bit. So, so yeah, the whole focus for the year had been Nice. So 
Uh, that's also why, as we were like building fitness through uh, throughout the winter, we were going to Nice for like already in January, February for like five weeks to uh, build uh, capacity and like a lot of volume in the training there before we were uh, heading into our first altitude camp of the season in Sierra Nevada to start racing with first a half distance race. So we came in with a little bit more intensity work in Sierra Nevada and. Uh, going into Oceanside before doing more army specific work and like getting more efficient at the army pace for the last three weeks going into Texas and then we had some weeks there where we tried to work again with the Vita Max and the higher intensity around May for the half distance race in Aix and Provence so we did focus on a little bit more like uh, sh short intervals and uh, uh, higher pace uh, especially on the swim and on the run before that and then a short sort of arm specific bulk, bulk again going into Frankfurt before we start building it up again with some uh, uh, a lot of fresh work in, in Fontainebleau for the whole summer for five weeks before going to Nice and trying to get it out on the course and uh, I had like two solid days of uh, uh, sessions out on the course before the race. I did exactly the same, so copy-paste on that answer. <laughs> now, you have extensive, both of you, extensive uh, you know, knowledge and experience working with Olav and working with portable metabolic testing with the VO2 Master. And, and this sports-specific training is, is obviously really, really essential, and you use data in all, you know, all three sports and, and triathlon. You know, if you're talking to a, a coach and an athlete who's new or maybe never even used uh, metabolic testing before, especially the portable, where you can do it during the sport, what would be some of the things that you would advise them to look at and how to use it as they get started to really achieve? Yeah, I think the, the VO2 Master is, uh, is a great tool, maybe not for like the pure beginners, because uh, I think as a, as a real noob in the sport, you need to kind of get the basics a little bit right. But then when you start to master a, a, a little bit of the sports, then it's a good way to implement the VO2 Master. And uh, yeah, I would maybe start with some, uh, maybe with some easy bike fitting. It's a great tool there because a bike fit is such an important race, especially of uh, of an Ironman. Because uh, yeah, you can get so much kind of free speed sitting in an efficient position, especially with aerodynamics. But it doesn't like the aerodynamics doesn't cover everything. You need to have also an efficient in terms of uh, the metabolic system. So yeah, maybe we have to master on a bike fit because a bike fit is definitely something that uh, kind of new-ish people to the sport should use because uh, it's super important. And also, I would say a kind of easy uh, metabolic test where you kind of ramp it up through all the intensities and do the VO2 to master together with uh, some lactate maybe and just get a, a good view. Of, uh, of your inner workings. But as I said, maybe this is not for like the, the pure beginners, but someone who has been training a little bit within triathlon. And, and uh, talking about the bike fit, that is where I've used it uh, over the winter now to really find a more solid position for myself, like where I can look at the, the tidal volume and how, like what what's the cost by going, uh, like rising myself a little bit higher. Uh, in terms of like uh, the CDAs uh, through the body rocket system and then I can see uh, what's the sort of uh, gains I'm getting there in terms of how much I can utilize my lungs and then uh, uh, comparing it to going in a lower position and see how that's impacting the, the, the breathing uh, rhythm and uh, comparing it to the potential gains in the arrow by going lower so for me it's been important to find like a stronger position maybe uh, bleeding off a little bit more power, but uh, uh, yeah, being uh, over time, and especially in terms of the run, being in a better, more efficient position uh, in terms of comfort. Excellent. And over the years, when you first started versus how you use it now, it's probably changed a lot. And also your knowledge of your own physiology and 
and power and capacities and everything that you've been learning along with the information. What would you say is the biggest difference with, between when you first started using it and now? I, I caught this like maybe a few years ago that uh, it's not always just like um, liters per minute, but having a higher tidal volume for me, especially on the run on the bike, uh, because on the swim we just measure after the event and it's kind of different. But having a higher tidal volume means that I'm actually more relaxed throughout my whole body. Like uh, my shoulders and hips and everything, it's just, it hits better. So that's uh, an important metric that's getting more important. I think as well, like the advantage by having measured uh, for so many years is that we also have like a sort of a, uh, sort of a footprint of what sort of fitness we need to be in to take for the right events. So uh, uh, that can be like looking at what my uh, my oxygen uptake is at threshold and comparing it to what I've been in the past with short distance race training in the past versus long distance training in the past and sort of trying to dial it in towards uh, what I know have been working before. What's the plan now and what are you thinking most about as you go into the next few weeks and get, get ready for Marbella and so forth? Uh, what's top of mind? Right now I'm kind of uh, emptying my mind a little bit. I'm not thinking too much about training. Today I wanted to have a longer run, but the weather was horrible and it was cold and raining. So yeah, I didn't force myself to kind of run as long as I wanted because now I just want to be kind of free from that stress that always have to perform in training. And then uh, in a week I will start to ramp it up really rapidly. Like I will still have one week kind of easy and then I will kind of go back up. So it will not be gradual, it will kind of be from one day to another kind of more on target. And then we go to altitude and do the last the bit of preparing for Mabaya. And in altitude, we will focus in the start a little bit by increasing the, uh, the threshold and then kind of go a little bit more race specific towards the end. But in the end of the day, like threshold and arm, no, 70.3 race pace is very similar. So I think it will be almost threshold till race day. Especially with the course that is in uh, Mabaya. It's like 1,900 1, meters, I think it is, with elevation. So it's almost uh, like one of the key sessions we're doing in Sierra Nevada. It's like just climbing from the bottom and up. Uh, and that's basically the yeah the, the bike leg of uh, Mabaya. So it will be a lot of uh, hill riding, I guess. Yes. And also we will take some, day, some days where we're just driving down to Mabaya and uh, riding through the course and doing like the intensity down there. And uh, we haven't seen the course yet actually there, but uh, if you trust uh, the Google Street View uh, images, the downhill should be quite straightforward. So we were thinking about actually bringing our road bikes and maybe do it on a road bike, but that's like, I think you will lose on it uh, over the whole course, but we have still not decided 100%. Tell me one thing, each of you, that you're most excited about right now, just in the moment, right today. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> like my mind is so empty. I've been so good at emptying. It's nothing more in it. Yeah, I've actually been um, looking into buying a car. So that's how far away from sports I am right now. So that's what I'm thinking mostly about. I have a motorcycle, but uh, when I drove to the swimming pool the other day and I was pouring down, I was thinking it's, it would be a little bit nice to have a car, especially when winter is coming. Yes, yes, for sure. That's great. Christian, do you have anything on your mind? No, I, I was just thinking it would be nice to start feeling good again, you know? Like uh, yeah. feeling that you're energetic, like feeling energized on training. So that, that's probably going to come in like five or seven days where I'm feeling sharp again Good. so that's on my mind yeah and i wish you all the best with that and 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 great luck to both of you and marbella and all your training and and uh well-deserved time to just readjust now and get back to things so thank you so much for your time today we really appreciate it the whole team is always behind you and it's very exciting for us to cheer you on so thank you and again congratulations thank you thank you